Okay, um, hello everyone. Okay, so the next program in chapter 6 is File Head Display. Okay, so write a program that asks the user for the name of a file. The program should display only the first five lines of the, of the file's content. If the file contains less than five lines, it should display the file's entire content. Okay, so we're going to um, ask the user to enter enter the name of the file, right? And the program should display only only the first five lines of the file. So that means that um, we have to create the file uh, on our computer first, because um, if not, then then whatever the user types wouldn't be um, uh, it, it wouldn't be available on the desk on our on our hard disk. Uh, if the file contains less than five lines, it should display the, the file's entire con content. If it contains more than five lines, then it should display the first five, only only the first five lines, as it says over here. Okay, so let's first of all go ahead and create the file. On my Mac, I'm going to um, look up text, text edit, and make sure that in your preferences, text edit is set to be saved as a plain text. If you set it to save it, be, if you set it to be saved as rich text, then it's going to have extra formatting behind what you type that you don't see, and it's going to be um, your content is going to be messed up. So make sure that the preferences for text edit is set to plain text, and then it will be just a text file. If you're on Windows, you can just use Notepad. Okay, so I'm just going to um, type in a bunch of uh, lines, right? Make it more than five for now. So just type in, I'll say first line. And I just make it actually I just keep on typing. Second line. Third. Okay. So I think it it, it is fine and I just type in a bunch of other lines like that. Just so we can have extra 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 lines. Alright. And I'll save this as, um, let's say, well, this is called file head display, right? So I'll just say, I'll just say text, dot, um, sample text dot txt, and I'm going to save it in the folder where I'm say I say we save all the programming challenges. So I'm going to create a folder here and call this file head display, and then I'll save the sample text in this folder. And if I save the program also in this folder, then they should be able to able to see each other. If I don't do that, then I um, then I need to specify to the program, okay, the full path where the text file is. But if, if I save the text file and the program together in the same folder, then then they should be able to see each other when they run. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to save that in the f in this folder, and this is sample text.txt. I hope I saved it with extension .txt. Okay. So I'm going to just not close this so we can compare. All right, so let's first of all define a main method. Now, you can go ahead and write your program, you know, just as as is without the main method. But it's good practice. It's a good thing to do that. In most programming languages, the the main method is the main function. Sorry, I mean it's the same thing, right? It's very similar. The main function is a function that has your program that starts your program. It's a function that calls every other function in most programming languages. So 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 it's a good practice. And a good idea to create a main function, write your program in there. If you have other functions, make sure you call them all in the main function. And after when you're after when you're done, you call the main function itself. Okay, so let's define a main function. <clears throat> and then now let's begin the program. So write a program that asks the user for the name of a file. So let's do that with the input function. And the input function is basically it takes in a couple of arguments. What you want to display to the user, which is basically some kind of a question so I'm going to say please enter the name of a file and so the input function is going to display this to the user it's going to pop up some kind of text box and allow the user to type in something now whatever the user types is re is returned as a string in this case the user is typing the name, a name of a file and so when it's returned we need a place to store it so I'm going to def create a variable I'm going to call it user file name I'm going to set it equal to whatever the input fu input function returns. Okay. So now we'll have 
it will have the name of the file here. So write a program that asks the user for the name of the file. We've done that. The program should display only the first five lines of the file's contents. If the file, okay, so we know that. All right, so first, uh, let's go ahead and next, uh, next open the file. Okay, since we are going to read from the file, okay, let's open the file in read mode. So the open function takes in, first of all, the name of the file, which we named, oh, actually, sorry, the name of the file, um, let's see. Well, so the name of the file we named, all right, so let's open the folder where we saved the file itself, which is going to be here. So we named it sample text, right, .txt. Let me just make sure I named it with the extension. Okay, so extension is .txt, so that's fine. Okay. It's, uh, I, I hit command I, by the way, on Mac to, to get the info. On, on, the, on Windows, that'll be, that'll be right clicking and then going to properties. Okay, so that means the user has to type in the, that exact name, okay, to be able to uh, read from that file, right? So since the user is going to type in a file name here, we want to use that use that variable, right? Because that's that's going to contain the user's response. The open function takes in the name of the file, which is going to be the user's response, and then what mode you're reading the file in. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. What mode you're opening the file the file in? In this case case, we are opening the file in read mode. So I'm just going to surround it with double quotations R. So surround the letter R with double quotations or single quotations, but I am using double quotations here. And so I'm opening the file in read mode, and this is basically going to create a file object, okay, in memory. It's going to create a file object in memory, so I need a variable to reference that file object. I need a variable to refer to that file object. So I'm going to create a regular variable. I'm going to call it um, um, you can call you can call it anything. I'm just finding a suitable name to call this. I'll call it. Um, I'm tempted to. I'll call it read file. Um, read file. Okay. So read file is going to be equal to the file object that was created in memory when we opened call or when we call the open function with this file name in read mode. Okay. So read file represents that file basically. All right. So now we have this. So now this variable here is going to re re represent that file object that that is created in memory. Basically, it's represented in the file. All right. So let's also create because it says over here that um, the program should display only the first five lines of the of the file's content. So we know that we are going to read only five lines from the file. If it has more than five lines, we're going to read only the first five lines. If it has less than five lines, we're going to read all all, all of the files. Right? We're going to we're going to basically display all the files, but we know that it's in the question it says only the first five lines. So I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call it a variable um, right, right even before the even before we ask the user for the name of the file. Let's just create this variable called um, let's say number of lines. Um, I, I'll call this maximum lines to read. Okay, now set it equal to 5. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to create another variable called lines to read. And I'm going to set it to um, 0 for now. As a matter of fact, we'll, um, we'll come back to this. Um, we'll come back to this. Just just um, just hold on. But but I'm creating this variable that to represent the lines read. And this variable is going to represent how many lines, how many, uh, what's the maximum lines we can read, or we should read. The question says five, but we haven't read anything yet, so I've, I've set this to zero. But we'll come back to this. Okay, so we ask the user um, for the, or is it? We ask, we, yeah, we ask the user for the name of the file, right? We open the file in read mode, and read file represents that file. And then now I'm going to. First of all, we have to check to see if the file contains something, right? If we, if you, um, if you, if you, the way, to, well, first of all, the way to read, okay, from a file is using the read line function, right? But when you call the read read line function and it returns an empty string, that shows that the number, sorry, that shows that the file is empty. And so it's, let's let's check to make sure that the file um, is not empty before we can read from it, right? I mean, or before we can do anything with it. If the file is empty, then we can't do anything with it. So 
let's create a while loop here to check to check okay if the file is um, we, we want to make sure the file is not empty and so while um, well f before that I'm sorry before that I uh, let's read let's read the very first line of the file of, the, of this read file let's read the very first line and the way to do that is, is using the function read line right but we, we have to um, we have to attach the object the file object which is a read file with it and so I'm just going to say read file I think the way I did it was a bit confusing so basically it's read file right dot read line okay sorry my typing is all bad all right so read file okay we are reading a line from the read file basically it's the it's basically the very first line and then as soon as you read the first line the, the read position of that file moves on to the beginning of the next line and waits for you to call read line again okay before it reads that line or, or before it reads the second line and as soon as it's done reading the second line the read position will move to the very beginning of the of the third line and then it will wait for you to call read line again before it reads that line so the read position moves accordingly after you've read a line the read position moves to moves to the beginning of the next line all right, so we're going to read the very first line, right? We know we need to represent the content of that first line in a variable. So I'm going to create the variable. I'm going to call it line, right? And so I read a line. I want to check to see if the content of line uh, is not empty, all right? And if it's not empty, that means there's something on that. There's something in it. That means I was able to read a line. And so I want to check to see first of all if it's not empty, because if it's empty, then I can't do anything with it, right? All right, so let's create a while loop, like I said before, and say while line, okay, while line is not equal to an empty string. Like I said, if it's if if line if we if you call read line and it, ret it returns an empty string, that means that we, you know we've reached the end of the line. So we've reached the end of the file, and there's nothing more to read. Okay, there's there's nothing more in the file. And so read a line. We check to see if that line is not empty. Right, and if it's not empty, we do something. Right, so we'll come back to that. But remember, I created this variable here, lines read, to keep track of, of the number of lines we read. Right, and so the very first time over here, we read a line. And so anytime we read a line, let's increase lines read by one. Okay, and so I'm going to say lines read plus equals one. This is the same as lines read is going to be equal to what's already stored in lines read plus one okay Nine, lines read initial will be zero so I'm saying zero plus one which gives me one and one is going to be stored in lines read and so I read the very first line of the file I since I've read of read a line I'm increasing lines read by one so lines read becomes one I've read one line and I'm checking to see if the content of that line is not empty because if it's not empty, that means it contains something. That means it's, it, it has something. And so we, I can use it. I can use that content. I can do something with it. But if it contains it, if it contains nothing, then I can't do anything with it. And so while the line is not equal to an empty string, it means we have, we have something in it. So we can do something. So we want to display it, right? But we also have to check to see if we've read um, more than um, more than five lines we also have to check that uh, so as long as we've read any 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 line okay as long as we've read lines less than or equal to five we are fine because the program said that no matter how many lines are in the file we should only read the very first five lines and if the file contains less than five lines we should only display the, the you know those we should only dis we should display all the lines okay but the first thing is the, the most important thing is if the file contains ten lines, over here our file contains more than you know more than even ten lines, and so the program says we should display only the first five lines of the file, and so while we are checking to see if that line contains, what okay while we are checking to see if the line is not empty, we also have to check to see if we read more than five lines, and so let's add an extra condition here and say while line is not equal to empty, and at the same time lines red over here I said line red it's lines red I'm sorry okay so while line is not equal to an empty string and at the same time lines red right 
is less than or equal to maximum lines to read, which is five. Okay, so we are checking to see if, first of all, the line that we've read is not empty. If it's not empty, that means it has something in there. Okay, now have we read more than five lines? Okay, while line is not while the line we read is not equal to an empty string, and at the same time the lines read is less than or equal to the maximum li lines to read. If it's less than or equal to five, then that means we we are fine. We can read anything less than or equal to five. We can read you know as many lines less than or equal to five. Okay. So you have to check that too. So if that's the case, then we can we should display it, right? 